Welcome to Crit Hit Interviews. I'm Shrimp, and today I'm joined by Arlian. Hello. And Lovi. Hello. Today we're interviewing Peter Lazarski from Bread Machine Games, Working Man, and of course, Imaginary Monsters. He's currently working on a new game called Abixis, and he's the creator of Halloween Forever and the lead artist and co-creator of Death State. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing okay. Had my morning coffee, and uh, I'm sitting here talking to you guys. That's what we forgot. <laughs> we forgot our coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Cancel the interview. Okay. There's just like a five-minute break as you hear like bubbling in the background, and then like... <sighs> <laughs> Anyway, before we percolate, yeah. Before we get into the games, uh, let's get to know a little bit about you. You're a huge fan of Halloween, right? Yeah, definitely. So, could you share your favorite memory of Halloween with us? Uh, I think one of the things that really kind of grabbed me when I was younger is uh, so. Uh, have you guys ever seen Halloween Three: Season of the Witch? Was yeah. that? Because I know the second Halloween movie was where they went away from Mike Myers. Was Halloween 3 where they went back? Or was that still when they were doing like the sort of one-shot series? Yeah, Halloween 3 was the like the Silver Shamrock sort of offshoot thing. Where they had like the... It was like weird Stonehenge magic. And um, it was you would put these like creepy Halloween masks and then kids would watch a commercial at some night on Halloween or something and it would turn their face into snakes and things. And uh, it was just this really bizarre story. But I remember seeing that portions of that when I was really young, like too young to see it. And specifically the scene where the kid and his family are in like the silver shamrock facility and they're getting sort of a demo of what the masks do and stuff. And he's like watching this blinking jack-o'-lantern on a screen and hearing this bizarre music and he like stumbles over and his like head turns into centipedes and <laughs> he's like ripping his face apart and his like parents are screaming and they're getting bitten by snakes and stuff but i remember seeing that when i was super young and it was just kind of like fixed on me like what is this thing and I, I like i didn't know what it was called and um for years i was trying to find this movie i kind of just gave up but i never knew to look in the halloween series because i just thought halloween is all Mike Myers and not this this other weird thing. And then I was just kind of going through, I don't know what, or watching movies with a friend. <clears throat> no, actually it was um it was in Syracuse one time. They were doing this uh horror movie marathon for uh for charity and we, a bunch of us went to go check it out. And um Halloween three was one of the movies and it was like it was like discovering a long lost brother or something and i was like wow i've been looking for this my entire life and this is it this is actually the thing and uh so that was I, I feel like i have probably a bunch of other like halloween foundational memories but that's one of the big ones oh that's awesome i i definitely know that feeling of like finding a long lost show or video game that you'd forgotten about and you're trying to find the name of it like legend me trying to remember the name of that movie for you so i'm like jim carrey was a villain and like the <laughs> devil <laughs> Yes, yeah, legend is legend is classic. So, since you're into scary things like us, uh, except yeah. for Shrimp because he's a cinnamon bull, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what game, movie, or book scares you the most? Um, God, there's there's a bunch. I love horror stuff, and uh, and it's funny too. Like, I didn't really start going to haunted houses until this year, but I I kind of binged on Halloween haunted houses this October, and that was. That was one of like the best life decisions I could have made. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I discovered what a claustrophobia hallway is, and that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think. So another thing that kind of went into Death State a lot is uh, Hellraiser movies, specifically Hellraiser one and two. Mm, There's the a handful of yeah, the cubes in there, and just a lot of uh, somebody. Somebody was on stream yesterday asking about the um, like the black light ray or the dark light ray that shows up in some worlds and kind of like scans over the um the landscape while you're in there you get a damage boost and also you take more damage but the thing with that is we're trying to really make that concretely from hellraiser 2 with the leviathan which is this giant sort of elongated cube tower that just like rotates over this sort of like mc escher-esque abyss hell thing and it just cast this beam of black light and when it runs over you're like the light shines on you you get this like 
sensation of wind and like everything inverts and whatever and uh it probably does something terrible to you but i was like can we put that in the game let's have that <laughs> <laughs> and it was really nice to try and figure out a way to kind of mechanically do it and integrate something like that in there that finally answered what what, what exactly that thing did i never knew it caused you to take more damage because whenever i got it i proceeded yep. to like explode everything near me it was like yeah it's risk and reward a little bit but if you're if you're killing more than you're being killed then you will you will succeed so actually touching on this subject then so what's your favorite memory of watching someone play your games i don't know there's a handful of i've, I've had a handful of good chances to bring the games that i work on to sort of public events and venues and things probably you know with the year that we went to we had we had two chances to bring death state to pax east the first time we did it in the mini booth and the second time we did it in the mega booth uh, sort of like the full 10 by 10 proper booth. And that was probably, you know, I, I love I love conventions. I love going to stuff like PAX. I love getting to show what we're working on and just meet anybody who walks in the door, essentially. And uh, those two events getting to show Death State there were just, you know, some kind of a happy place. I just love that kind of situation. So what would be your preferred graphical aesthetic for games? Definitely for like myself personally, uh, I just love pixel stuff, retro things, sort of, you know, I, I'm, I was a big Super Nintendo kid, so <laughs> I'm still kind of holding on to that. <clears throat> it's also, you know, as far as me approaching kind of my, my sweet spot production wise, I like the amount of art that I can create uh, in the time that I have, because just my time tends to be kind of limited, you know, whether I'm doing stuff at work or doing stuff on a personal level. Uh, so I'm trying to just, you know, get squeeze as much out as I can out of limited. So pixel stuff works pretty well for that. Um, it's sort of in, for Bread Machine in general, we do have some 3D stuff coming down the pipeline, um, which I've been involved in too. And it's just, it's a different kind of animal, but also still fun. But given my choice, I would do probably pixel games forever. <laughs> Fair enough. So given that there seems to be elements of... SNES aesthetic to a lot of your games and like this point of inspiration I wanted to actually ask what were your top three SNES games yeah uh definitely top one top, number one top one Super Nintendo game and like bright red letters has to be Earthbound um I was trying uh I didn't I didn't really get to play it until later but it's kind of you know a lot of that is going into Abixis but Demon's Crest yeah I was I think my one of my favorite games growing up was Gargoyle's Quest, and I never got to play the NES one. And then when I discovered Demon's Crest, I was like, this is... I'm, like, sad I missed this. This is really something. Ironically, when I saw Vixus, I actually was, like, pointing at the screen. I'm like, this is... I I played something like this when I was a kid. Like, yeah. <laughs> Demon's Crest. And then I'm, like, staring over, and I'm like, I saw you had, like, a, a thing of, like, a Demon's Crest screenshot. I'm like... He, he totally is, like, partly paying homage to this game. Like, he knows what Demon's Crest is. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> it's, such a, it's such a pretty game. Uh, I, my friend Wayne, who does pixel art, too, we both like to just kind of nerd out about Demon's Crest. It's, it's this nice high standard of just, just Capcom doing something really right. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and also, probably Mega Man X. I've, as far as any Super Nintendo game that I have... I don't think I've played anything more than Mega Man X. So just, uh, we actually, I brought it out for, um, we did a uh, Extra Life Marathon uh, oh. when that happened. We tried to stream a bunch of it. We didn't get to stream all of it just because we had too much, like too many connected devices kind of competing for IPs and multiplayer and stuff. So we had to turn the stream off after a bit. But I think I started playing Mega Man X at three or four in the morning and then finished it probably around seven and it was like all right time to go home <laughs> <laughs> fair enough but that was good it was a good it's nice it's a it's a long ish game i don't do like speed runs or anything so i'm kind of like diligently plotting my way through it but it was uh it's a nice game to kind of sit down and finish in one sitting do you, do you kill the penguin first <laughs> yeah you gotta you gotta do that yeah <laughs> of course yeah it's still a pain in the butt to get the the helmet power up though or no, the um the mega blaster, or like the the stronger blaster, because you have to get through that dumb like ceiling clipping thing. Yeah, no, I know that you need the helmet to get mm -hmm. the mega blaster. That's why I was thinking helmet, but uh. 
And then uh, the, the sure you can great for how you mm -hmm. get that. Yeah. <laughs> or, sorry, the Hadoken. The one thing that's disappointing about that is I don't think it retains with the like the save code. I don't so you'd have think to like you have to. I I got it when I was that younger and then suck. it went away. <laughs> no, nah, you, you just go back there. Yeah, yeah so that sucks. level actually you want to go back to anyways because it's a great place to farm stuff for your uh, mm -hmm. power capsules and lives because there's just these enemies Definitely. that drop heaps of lives there and die in one hit. Yeah, the brown beds. I'm yeah. too young to have experienced save codes and stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no, it's great when you're playing something like Castlevania. <laughs> Ugh. It's like, uh, let me write this down. <laughs> like this well, now I just take a picture of my phone, so that's pretty nice. Oh yeah, actually, we, we're, we're pretty spoiled now, but like, mm -hmm. writing down the grids for Castlevania, shoot me. Oh yeah. <laughs> You've been working in games for around seven years, right? Yeah. So what got you into game development, or was it just something you always wanted to do? Uh, it wasn't something I really realized I could do um, until, you know, until I sort of realized I had this body of work where I was doing a bunch of illustration and sort of concept art dish stuff and also, you know, had a bunch of animation under my belt, some graphic design experience from school and some, you know, odd jobs and like new media stuff. So I just had this weird kind of amalgam of skills, you know, doing this kind of jack of all trades thing. And then <clears throat> I remember meeting a friend, my friend Tio, when uh, I was doing some art show or something, selling prints and screen prints and comics or something. And he's like, you should come check out Working Man. Like they would love your stuff. And I had never heard about them before. And uh, Working Man is sort of like our more corporate side of uh, Bread Machine, where Bread Machine is something we created last year for to house our uh, our like indie indie efforts and self publishing efforts. So we uh, I you know I got in touch and it, they're like, do you want to come in for an interview tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, sure. And then I was like starting a couple of days after. So it uh, it kind of fell together nicely, and it was you know it made me glad because. For years, I'd been trying to kind of gear myself up to leave the town that I'm living in and go do something somewhere else. But I was, you know, kind of going to be a lot further away from family and stuff, and I wasn't really looking forward to it. But this has let me, you know, stay local-ish. I'm, I'm still far enough away from family that it's, you know, a short trip, but it's like not like I had to go all the way to California or... Um, you know, somewhere, somewhere a plane ride away instead of a, uh, a drive away. So yeah, it was good to be close enough to visit the family, but not too close to where they drive you crazy. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that was, I mean, that was nice in college. <laughs> and now I like want to see my uh, like niece and nephew more and stuff. So. Uh, so you were new to programming when you started on Halloween Forever. And yeah, I'd only really done art until that point. I'd imagine you hit a few bumps in the process because of that. What was the hardest challenge you had to overcome when making it programming related or otherwise? So Halloween Forever is made in Game Maker, and I'm still extremely grateful for Game Maker just being a tool that I could learn to use and then create and ship a game with. And it, it wasn't the it wasn't the first time I tried programming for for games, and just any other thing I'd done in the past had just never stuck or I just couldn't, you know, I couldn't get my hands into it or the editor wasn't visual enough. Um, but just being able to, Game Maker has this really nice rapid prototype end where you can kind of just get up and running kind of quickly and you still have a long way to go from having sort of a fully featured game. Yeah. But just getting to the point where, you know, I can follow along with some YouTube tutorials. Uh, Sean Spaulding is the, the one who I always recommend to people as far as if you're kind of a visual person, who doesn't necessarily thrive out the gate with just a textbook or something, check out check out YouTube programming tutorials. A lot of them are kind of bite-sized and a la carte. And uh, Sean Spaulding makes a bunch of good ones. I think he's actually working for Game Maker, like sort of the mothership now and producing a lot of content and doing community stuff with them, which is, which is great. He's the right person for it. And um, I think, yeah, just really just being able to kind of get to the point where I could have something to show for myself and then also just uh, being able to kind of carry on and take it until the end. And I probably did too big of a game for my first game, but also I didn't do the MMO thing, which everybody warns people about doing, like don't do an MMO. And I never want to do that. So 
I was like, I'm safe, right? And I was like, no, this is actually still kind of a <laughs> kind of a substantial platformer. But you know, we chipped away at it, and streaming helped a lot, just with keeping the schedule and kind of staying diligent with it. Leading on from that point, when it comes to Death State, then, like, what would you have considered the hardest challenge for it, or hardest challenges so far for Abixis? Yeah, so Death State, I think part of this comes out with or comes out from how just Death State came together and sort of formed itself internally. Uh, we did, this one time we had some downtime <clears throat> and we had just sort of a bunch of teams internally, you know, come up with game prototypes and pitches. And the one that Matt Leffler and I, Matt Leffler's the, the lead developer, co-creator of Death State, we put that together. It was originally gonna be sort of a mobile game uh, with like a touchscreen interface. And that's why we kind of got on and stayed on sort of the single stick thing. But we, kind of had to just, we, we, it, after, after that, it was kind of like, this is a concept, great, cool. And uh, there wasn't really a ton of time set aside to continue doing that. And, but we, we still had, you know, a couple, I think we just sort of talked to ourselves and said, let's just, if, if we just, can we take, you know, four hours a week or something, and just kind of slowly trickle in features. And luckily we were doing things enough, or I would do, I, I would do some art kind of in that fashion, then give him sort of like a stack of art after a couple of weeks. And then if he had, you know, some time in between projects, he would spend a couple of days integrating things. And we were able to kind of just at least luckily drive it forward enough without disrupting other things where after a few months we could say, hey, look, we, we have more stuff in here. It's kind of neat. And then we sort of had a couple of those internal like, hey, we, we got more in. Uh, can we take it to PAX? And then once we did the mini booth, then I think it was sort of like, all right, we have a game, it's substantial enough, what can we do or what should we do to complete it and get it to a point where we feel like it's shippable? And that was that was mostly like six months or seven months after when we did the mini booth was kind of like, all right, we are going to create this now. And we, we pulled in a bunch of people uh, for a couple hours and such and like expanded the effort a little bit. And uh, that was a long answer, but the biggest challenge I think was just kind of proving and getting the initial time to get that together. Yeah. yeah, most of my challenges are really just kind of time, I think. Abixis has a similar thing going on where Abixis is benefiting a lot from what I made in Halloween Forever. It's it's also a game maker game. Uh, it has a handful of new features like the light and dark and uh, some different kind of interesting shader tricks and stuff. And it's going to be a more vertical platformer. but having limited time like mostly just my streaming schedule and a couple you know every now and then some hours i can spend afterwards to do some extra stuff on it it's it's kind of i i feel like i'm the slow and i'm the slow and the slow and steady kind of thing sometimes it can be frustrating not being able to get more work done on it but also i'm encouraged because i look back and i see how much like incremental stuff just adds up you know, I can say, oh, like, really did get something done compared to two months ago, or this or that. So it's just kind of staying on it and not getting discouraged, I guess. You mentioned that you stream uh, most of your development on Twitch. Mm -hmm. um, you, you even talked about failing, like failing live can be kind of fun with some of the crazier bugs. Yes. Yeah. So would you recommend open development like that to other developers? And what would you say are some of the main benefits? I, I really would. Uh, and it, honestly, it depends. It depends on sort of, you know, who's who's doing it, how much what they have on their on their plate or like their their spectrum of goals as far as like marketing goes, or just, you know, what do they have already as far as a community? Uh, it's it definitely takes some time to kind of build stuff up from from zero. You know, nothing, 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 no marketing budget, no, no followers, no, you know, community, any of that stuff. But I feel like it's the kind of thing where the more you do it, and if you can do, if you can, if you can say, you know, I'm going to do this for a couple of years and just build it up over time, it really does add up as far as, you know, you have people that find out about your things just because you've been letting them know every couple times a week and such. And, and also I think it gets, gets people into the better situation of showing their work earlier instead of you know, I'm working in secret and then there's, you get kind of in this, uh, sometimes you can get in this cycle of, I'm not ready to show this until I show this. But I feel like, you know, I go through, we go through sprints, um, you know, me and like, there's, there's two other people working on Abixis too. We go through sprints in um, getting things together and getting what we need to get done 
presentable, but at the same time, it feels less of a hurdle to say, all right, we're going to show this now because we've always been, but now we're just going to, you know, make sure like the menus at the beginning are nice or get like the flow together so we can show some actual progress at the next, you know, show that we're bringing it to. But uh, it, if, especially for indies, I think there's a lot to benefit from doing open development. As long as you, you know, feel comfortable doing it, it's, I think it's worth it. So Death State has a very obvious Lovecraftian aesthetic to it. Are there any specific stories or creatures that you drew from as a source of inspiration, such as like the Dagon boss? Yeah. Secondarily, uh, are there any ideas you're intending on including as you continue to update? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, Lovecraftian stuff was definitely, you know, just a lot of fun to work with. I, re I really like this weird vein of cosmic horror that we can kind of play with and even to beyond just uh like hp lovecraft source material uh there's there's this movie beyond the black rainbow that was a big early influence on what we wanted to do or kind of accomplish with death state and kind of the feeling of you know you're going into this like other place but it's you know kind of surreal and a little bit trippy and stuff too but uh yeah i mean any anything from sort of like the Lovecraft source material was just a lot of fun to kind of throw in. Like getting the Gugs in were pretty nice. Those guys are just strange uh, and handful of other things. I think there's, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's just a lot of fun to mess with all that stuff. And even like the Hellraiser stuff too. It's pretty Lovecraftian just in sort of this more kind of um, like you're getting this weird sort of penitential cosmic horror, body horror, existential horror or something going on. Yeah. Um, and sort of like blurring the lines between, you know, like what is what is an angel, what is a demon kind of thing. And like we're all just sort of not, uh, we're all insignificant in a sense. But that kind of like feeling of, you know, smallness is uh, is kind of exciting. Or like you go, I, th I think it was happening early on too, where like you're going into these worlds and it's like, where did all these dead bodies come from? They're just here, you know? <laughs> it's like there's so many skeletons. Like who's are these <laughs> are, uh, and, one of the thoughts i was like is are, are these implied to be like mine as i die and keep looping through this place yeah that's actually pretty cool because yeah you're just you're kind of just like stuck in like weird death yeah i don't know i, I imagine that the death universe of death state is like a very old old place but also um you know human skeletons like they're they've been a lot of people a lot of people have like died in this place and they're you know unable to rest in this strange sense one of the things that really creeped me out when I, I was watching Arlian play that state was just the amount of corpses that pile up when you're murdering everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a few corpses, it's like, sure, you know, I'm just killing things. And then once they start piling up, it's like, man, what, it's it's horrible in here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like, it's fun to show a little bit of, you know, you get this idea of, all right, there's a bunch of dead bodies over there. I've been in that area. And that reminds me too of this like debate we had during during development too, where uh, it was controversial that we had blood coming out of the skeletons for a while, and um, I think one one of the guys was like, we should have like blood chips or blood particle or like bone chips or bone particles, and I just said, well, just why no, just just keep blood. Like blood comes out of everything. There's like just <laughs> skeletons. Like blood comes out. It's it's red. It's, it's exciting. It's more. It's more of a like a, it's a we better can visual. explain it that the marrow of the bones was still alive. Wait, so the skeletons were still alive. <laughs> yeah no it's just they had so much bone marrow it was like overflowing um, basically you just say hey look over there the wall is bleeding i don't think we have to explain anything <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just like we're just sitting under the little puddle um as, also as far as like things that we're continuing to update one of the things we've been doing on the the bread machine uh twitch channel is just kind of slow rolling a couple death state art updates that we that we may or may not be able to integrate at some point but um one thing that I started yesterday that'll be fun to continue with is uh, actually having you know, like a much bigger, much more sort of like roided out looking Cthulhu boss, which uh, oh God. will come in in some like I don't I don't know like I'm just I'm just kind of making stuff and we'll figure out a plan for it later. But um, he'll be fun if we get him in. <laughs> oh so far, I'm just animating his wings. So more on the topic of content. Mm -hmm. uh what update are you most excited about for death state well i think it'll be it'll be nice to see how much of the work that we've been doing on twitch we can get in um i have to see how that goes uh we do have so one thing that has been it's in the hopper right now is the the switch port and um 
mostly I'm, I've been pretty hands off with it, but I just know that it's it's in progress and looking nice. So once we can get that onto the Switch too, that will be pretty nice. Uh, just I think everybody's everybody's excited about it. Everybody in the office, you know, people have like their you know kind of uh, you know qualms or complaints with Nintendo, but when it comes to actually being able to get something that you've made onto a Nintendo console, everybody just kind of turns into little kids again. And, uh, <laughs> People, people are just genuinely excited. And I think the Switch has just been, you know, I, I, I love using it. It's just been a fun place for indies too. So it would be great to get that added to the catalog. In that case, for both Destiny and Halloween Forever, are there any features you really wanted to add to the games but couldn't? Yeah, I think for Destiny there were a few. And and this is, kind of, <clears throat> this is kind of a natural state, I think, of getting into any long-term game development where... It's sort of this period of time I call feature triage, where you're you have a you have a ship date in mind, whether it's a firm deadline or just some internal deadline. And sometimes you get into this kind of feeling where your project is like a sinking ship and you're like bailing out water. And the water that you're bailing out are potential content and features, and you're just like, we just need to keep this thing afloat and so we can get it out the door. And you know, luckily with Death State, we had a chance to do some pretty sustained support for the first year it came out. So we were able to get a bunch of things in after that probably sort of needed to be in for launch, but they're in there now. Um, but there are a couple things that we really wanted to do that we hadn't been able to address is um, we had artwork and concepts for some additional player characters. Hmm. One of them was a succubus who would ideally have had the ability to charm enemies. And there's just a lot of development that goes into that that we didn't have time to kind of plan out. And then... Um, or just execute on. Another one was the slime playable character who we really wanted you to be able to have the ability to like spawn slimes that would sort of be minions or either sort of go off on their own AI or do something. And that was another kind of thing where like a, like a whole new entity just to kind of deal with this. And uh, it seemed kind of, kind of a challenge at the time. Um, for Halloween Forever, features that I wanted to add, I think it would have just been, it would have been nice to just add more content to the game. But I'm trying to think if there's anything specific that stands out to me that I really wanted to get that in. I think more, just more content, more characters would have been nice to have. Even I was, I remember talking to uh, to people about including like a speed run timer or something and that was pretty nice, but I just never had the, like, the mental space to accomplish that, unfortunately. So actually doubling back though for a moment, you mentioned Death State's going to be uh, potentially being released on the Switch. Mm -hmm. Are there, is there a likelihood that any of these features you wanted to be incorporated but couldn't at the time will possibly find their way into the game? Maybe. It really depends on, you know, I think if, if, the, if the Switch version performs really well and we have some justification to go back and do some you know, more aggressive patching and just adding more things. I think that's probably what we would be waiting for. Um, but realistically, assuming, assuming, you know, if 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 we were to if we were to stop here and like do no more platforms, I think Death State has been out long enough, and we we like what we've made. But it's it's also sort of time that we start sunsetting uh, updates on it a little bit. But if, if if that were to change, it would be it would be fun. You know, I, Death State's sort of like my first my first big beautiful child and I'm, I'm happy to see what it's grown into and uh you know it'll be nice to it's always nice to take care of uh the thing that you make and, and people still find it today and they're like wow i've never seen this before this is like something that i love to play and that you know makes me feel great so i like that people are still being able to discover it yeah no, it's actually a little fun yeah thank which you it's a, a kick in the nuts sometimes but so good <laughs> <laughs> a good kick in the nuts uh... <laughs> it's a good tagline <laughs> Not the so, bad kind. Good kind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, so um, I've seen you describe Abixis as a hellish Metroidvania with themes of unlikely redemption. So what else could you tell us about it? Are there any cool features or facts you'd like to share with people who haven't been following the development? Yeah, so Abixis is... So just to give people like a quick image, very... Uh, Demon's Crest inspired doesn't look exactly like it, um, but also one of the things that I spent a good deal of time last year putting together is uh, <clears throat> there's 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 a uh, some simple lighting going on. So you're in you're a demon sort of in a, a dark abyss or hell or something, and early in the game you discover or get sent sort of a 
like a message or a prayer, essentially kind of asking for help. And sort of the mystery of Abixus is why did, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not like a demon's job to answer prayers. Why did this come all the way down to where you were? And, uh, something sparks the fire inside like your like weird little evil heart and uh you start kind of trying to escape this you know cosmic prison that you and all these other you know like demons and tortured souls are stuck inside to like get out and save someone living you know on on earth or like in the mortal world or whatever and in doing so you kind of you know cause a lot of disruption because that isn't supposed to be how things work you know this is a place where you don't get out of it or you definitely don't like escape yourself. So it's, it's sort of like has some themes of just, you know, weird kind of imprisonment and, you know, escaping that. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I definitely like anti-heroes as far as, you know, like the character that you're playing shouldn't be the one who is, you know, saving the day, but because of circumstances, you're like the best shot. So it's, uh, there's kind of like a sadness to that, but it's, I don't know, I'm excited to kind of see what we make. Um, and also too, um, my friend Catherine has been doing additional art for Abixis. And so it's really nice to have a person kind of throwing their hat into the mix and seeing what they come up with and like collaborate with that. And uh, also my friend Rob is doing music. He did the music for Halloween. And um, with Abixis, we're going more of like a synth route instead of sort of like the, uh, like the LSDJ like Game Boy Tracker, so it'll be, you know, a little more spooky in some fun ways. I mean, Death State had a really strong soundtrack, so I, I can look forward to this. Yeah, I'm really, I want to sit down with Rob and record a whole pile of uh, screams and laughs and things, because that was, honestly, that was one of my favorite things to Death State, was uh, us just sitting in the sound room and just cackling and screaming into a microphone and you know, getting a little bit of like post-processing effects on it. It's like, cool, now we have a sound when like a skeleton appears or like this boss will do this. Yeah, whenever stuff. like the mini bosses, you bump into one, you just hear like a <laughs> Yeah, those were so fun. A lot of those are me and a lot of those are like other people. Um, I remember we had some really weird, we were like just trying to think of how can we make like a different kind of stream? And we had some, I think the weirdest thing we had this one time is... Uh, we had a shotgun mic, which is like sort of a directional microphone um, above my head. Like I was, and my, my head was tilted up. I was looking up at the ceiling and the shotgun mic was pointed down sort of at my mouth and I had water in my throat and I was like gargling, screaming into <laughs> the microphone to get the to get the kind of screams that I wanted for uh, the, the Flesh Beast, who's like the alternate boss for um, Osain Swamp, I think. That's super um, cool. It was really gross. I like. I almost made myself sick. <laughs> I was like, I feel like I'm, I had to waterboard myself to like get the sound effect, but it was nowhere near that bad. But it was, you know, I was like, oh man, going to all the lengths. It was. It, it was a fun. It was. A, that was a really fun process. Lastly, can we expect a new game from Bread Machine? Yes, and actually soon. Uh, I've told people we are, are getting dangerously close to announcing one of the two games that we're working on right now. Um, so some new IP that should be pretty fun. Um, probably next week. I'm not sure if we're going to try to do it on Wednesday, but we uh, will probably be announcing one of the games at least next week. And we'll kind of see how that goes for from from here on out. But um, we have a couple, you know, pots cooking and we're excited to, you know, start sharing them with people and still still some time to go i think one game is small one game is larger so the small game would probably come out sooner but um i think what people can look forward to from bread machine is we have a lot of really cool creative talent and also one of the things that has been sort of my goal with getting our games to kind of come together is i'm trying to i'm i'm hoping that we have more chances for other people and sort of like the bread machine studio to sort of say like all right here's what do you want to put together? Like, what's what game is going to come out? So there's probably going to be a good deal of variety, um, but I'm really excited to see you know what people think of just like you know us as like an indie like indie house having you know like this cool spectrum of just like really unique content. I think it's going to be super fun. So, can we get any hints onto either of these two 
things that we'll be potentially releasing on the horizon one soon as Sure. Later. I can, yeah. So the, the larger game, I think I mentioned it earlier, the larger game is a 3D game. Um, Death State was made in Unity, but it was, you know, a lot of 2D in, in Unity. So the, the larger game is going to be, you know, pretty definitely 3D. Um, the smaller game, uh, I would say it, it's, uh, it's probably more a couch co-op. Oh. And that would be, that. those are my, those are my clues. I will say nothing more. <laughs> well, actually, I was going to ask one thing. Aesthetically, sure. are they going to be still along the creepy road, or are they going to be sort of a different thing thematically? Because, I mean, if you would I would say yes and no. Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Uh, hmm. It's fair enough. <laughs> well, I do like my creepy games, which is why I ask. <laughs> no, I understand. I think the um so the 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 game that we'll be announcing next week is by, you know, like a like a like a new like a new pair of like art and developer team. And so it will be it's going to go into some it's going to go into some different directions have some cool things happening there the the bigger game that we're working on will i think if anything it will probably start very normal but then you can kind of get into some strange creepiness if that makes any sense so it has it's, it's different sort of routes it can go and amongst those are creepy things or it's just as it progresses it gets creepier i think if you you could accidentally get very creepy and make a very creepy thing in it but um it really depends on it really depends on how much content we get in there and what sort of the flow is but you know we're figuring that out it's it's a that process interesting if it's mm -hmm. sort of an open-ended thing you know I will, I will say nothing more <laughs> these, these lips are like... sealed free horror is best horror <laughs> <laughs> all right well you can buy halloween forever on steam and Death State is available on Steam and PS4, and I guess soon it'll be available on Switch. Also head over to ImaginaryMonsters.com to keep up with Peter's work. Uh, if you want to see him develop games live, he's going to be Imaginary Monsters on Twitch as well. Be sure to follow at BreadMachineGo on Twitter and BreadMachineGo on Twitch if you want to see some live Death State art. Anywhere else you'd like to send people, Peter? Um, I mean, that's that's a handful of places. No, that's, that's pretty succinct. I think... Um... I overlap between Imaginary Monsters and Bread Machine, but we have a lot of really nice people that get to kind of sit down and do some of the Bread Machine stuff. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's We're a very young, our Twitch presence is very young and our like indie studio presence is pretty young too, but it'll be kind of fun to see how that grows. So I think part of the, the joy of this is people getting to kind of witness the steps along the way too. So I'm excited to, to share that with people. Awesome. Yeah, it might even inspire some people to work on their own thing along the way. Honestly, that's one of the most rewarding things I've got doing anything on Twitch is sort of this uh, on-the-fly mentorship or even just, you know, more constructive mentorship things where, um, and also I'm getting mentored too, especially when I'm doing development and I don't know what I'm doing and people are like saying, hey, try this code snippet or what if we did this or that. Um, so it it definitely changes how you work a little bit. It can be a little bit distracting at times, but at the same time, when I'm doing development on Twitch, I'm both learning and teaching at the same time. Uh, and a handful of times people come in and they just say, how did you do this? And I say, this is how I did this, these tools. Uh, this is like how I started. And I didn't have an asset like this when I was uh, trying to figure this out. You know, I didn't, I didn't go to school specifically for games. I kind of had to like invent it out of this like hodgepodge of things. But if it helps save somebody some time and helps, you know, put them onto not even the right track, but a track that resembles somewhere they want to go, that's that's what I want to do. That's, you know, I really get a, a kick out of being able to just like help people. This is what you've been trying to find and it's doable. I'm doing it. So there's to me there's a lot of value in that. Awesome. I, I agree. Would you also want me to but include like a link to your discord uh yeah sure i think the um yeah discord is great i love being able to like just keep in touch with people well to enable people to be lazy there'll be a link to all of the above mentioned things and the imaginary monsters discord in the description of this video as well 
That sounds wonderful. Yeah. Because typing in a Discord URL is kind of... I don't yeah, know, they're not, no, they're not beautiful to look at. <laughs> There's actually been an exception. I've seen one beautiful one to look at because it was literally GFD. That's it. Oh man. Yeah. I want it. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Make it mine. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys for uh, like giving me the chance to sit down and talk with you. You're, you're no, a good thank crew. You. Yes. Yeah. yeah thanks so much you. for doing this. We, we appreciate yeah. the time that you offered here. Like we get that you're, very busy in development so no the fact that you took the time to sit down with us is highly appreciated and the phone didn't ring once until now so that's good <laughs> <laughs> yes uh yeah i don't know i i mean some of the stuff it's kind of memory memory lane for me but it's uh i th it's nice to be able to talk through some of these things and just you know share the story and you know because it's not going to be the last story we do either we have you know two new games in development that we're going to be talking about and like Abixus is, you know, living and healthy. So I don't know. It'd be, Oh, don't worry. Be some, some fun years. We might snag you for another interview down the line with some more stuff. So yeah, yeah hit, hit me up. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, I suppose we'll leave off this particular bit of, uh, crit hit interviews. You can catch us perhaps next week, even with, with more fun, juicy tidbits. And don't forget to catch our review of Death State if you're curious about it. Since you can totally find that in the link in the description. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, feel free to tell people if you think else might be interested in this game or the content that's on this channel. Because sharing is caring. You are so lame, lovey, and yet I, I can't actually judge you because my puns are worse. <laughs>